Welcome to this month's Third Thursday webinar, brought to you by Synergy Settlement Services. The Third Thursday webinar is part of an ongoing free monthly webinar series. Each presentation is done by a Synergy subject matter expert who will tackle difficult issues that arise at settlement. During today's presentation, if you have questions, type them into the control panel where it says questions. The following brief presentation will give you an overview of what Synergy does in 30 seconds. A uh, trial lawyer's job isn't to know all the nuances, to know what it takes to keep Medicaid in place or SSI and preserve Medicare and comply with the Medicare Secondary Payer Act and resolve these complicated liens that may be present. So all of those issues are issues that the trial lawyer really doesn't have the time or the expertise to deal with. They need a partner that they can rely upon that can handle all of those issues, and that's, that's exactly what Synergy is. Hello and welcome to Synergy's third Thursday webinar. Today we'll be discussing a topic that I've called flipping the script to reduce hospital liens. This presentation today will show uh, how to obtain and use hospital data to empower your lien negotiations and why that data and these arguments are so relevant and effective under most states common law and lien statutes. Now, in my career so far, I've been either fortunate or unfortunate that I have dedicated the entirety of my career to this one single issue, which is the reasonable value of healthcare. For me, hospital billing issues do become complex and counterintuitive and sometimes even frustrating to explain and litigate. But at the end of the day, I'd say I'm fortunate in that this issue touches so many aspects of people's lives and I'm always on the right side of this issue, helping people protect their rights against overreaching hospitals. As you can see, most states do have hospital lien statutes. Here's a list of, I believe all of them, but certainly most of them. And these statutes in general allow hospitals to enforce very powerful liens against your personal injury settlements. In most states, the liens are first priority, which means they supersede even your legal fees and your costs. And in others, they attach after fees and costs. Now, importantly, most of the lien ordinances and statutes in this country do require that the hospitals limit themselves to reasonable charges. As you can see here, California's Civil Code 3045.1 requires reasonable and necessary charges. Florida's require a lien for reasonable charges. Illinois, a health care provider's reasonable charges. Georgia, a lien for reasonable charges. And the list goes on. You'll have to check your home state's hospital lien statutes for a reasonable limitation. In addition to the statutes, most common law in the states, in the various states, also limits hospitals to reasonable charges. I've quoted a few cases of, of note. California, a hospital has a burden to prove by a preponderance of the evidence the amount of its lien, i.e. the amount of the reasonable and necessary charges. In Florida, a patient may not be bound by unreasonable charges in agreement to pay charges in accordance with standard and current rates. Importantly, the court went on to say, when a contract fails to fix a price furthermore, a reasonable price is implied. Illinois has similar law and states that the law implies that there is an agreement to pay a reasonable price for goods and services. Again, this is dealing with a situation where a patient has been treated but did not agree to a price in advance. Most of the common law in the states that deal with this issue predicate this argument on an open price term contract or the equitable concept of uh, quantum merit or, or something of that nature, which says that if you receive something of value, you ought to pay whatever that service is worth. In Georgia, the courts said that the fair and reasonable value of goods and services is often determined by considering what similar buyers and sellers have paid and received for the same product in the same market and went on to say that the court could see no reason why that same why the same cannot be true of healthcare 
And perhaps for today's presentation, one of the most important quotes is from Louisiana, which said that a reasonable sum for services rendered usually includes the actual cost, including the general overhead attributable to the project and a reasonable profit. So remember that a reasonable charge is essentially the cost plus a reasonable profit. Now, again, just like the statutes, you will have to check the common law in your home state to determine how your courts have dealt with the reasonableness requirements in general and how they re and how they relate specifically to health care. It's real important to, to find out if your statute and your common law does require hospitals to have reasonable charges or limit them to the recovery of reasonable charges because most hospital charges are inherently unreasonable. They're typically unilaterally set. Uh, the hospitals call them charge master rates or a charge master price list, which is nothing more than the master list of prices that the hospital will use to generate all of its bills. They're created without regulatory oversight and they're created without regard for the cost of care incurred by the hospital in rendering these services. So that's important when you think back to what we just saw from the Louisiana courts who very succinctly told us that a reasonable charge is cost plus a reasonable profit. I've deposed numerous hospital charge master employees who have all said the same thing. They do not consider cost of care when setting their charge master rates. That gives you a pretty good picture as to whether or not these charge master prices would be reasonable. Most charge master price lists are between four and time and 10 times the hospital's average cost of care. So if something costs the hospital a dollar, they're gonna charge somewhere between four and $10 for that item or for that service. And some individual charges are much, much higher than this. Um, and a good example of that would be CT scans. We'll, we'll look at some CT scan prices in a moment. So I just wanted to flash back though to the Louisiana quote, a reasonable sum for services is the actual cost plus a reasonable profit. CT scan prices are one of the most egregious on almost any hospital's charge master price list. Here you have a sample of four CT scans that appeared on one bill that I analyzed. The first $5,000, the cost to the hospital is approximately $120. For the second one, the $10,000 charge, the cost of the hospital approximately $240, $3,000 charge, approximately $77 in costs, and it goes on. For these four scans that were rendered to a patient who came in from an auto accident, the hospital charged $23,000, and it's estimated the cost to the hospital was about $520. Now, back in 2015, a very well-respected healthcare journal called Health Affairs did a study and identified the 50 hospitals with the highest markups above cost in the country. They used this same concept that the Louisiana courts mentioned, and that is an unreasonable charge would be the cost of care plus an unreasonable profit. And they use the hospital's self-reported data to analyze this, these amounts. They found that on average, hospitals charge about 3.4 times their costs, which has increased, it's tripled in fact, since 1984 from 1.35 times their costs. So in 1984, what this data suggests is, is that hospitals were requiring or requesting an approximate 35% profit. Now they've increased that to a 250% profit. The top 50 hospitals analyzed in the study though, had a staggering average of over 10 times their cost. That's a thousand percent markup quite different than a 35% markup in 1984. So what I've done here is I've laid out in the next few slides, the list of the top 50 most unreasonable hospital charges in the country. Take a look down this list. I'll flip through it slowly enough that you can do so. And you'll notice on the right hand side in parentheses, I've put the state where the hospital resides. 
if you're from Florida like I am, you'll notice that almost half of these hospitals are in Florida. However, they're, they're, they are sprinkled throughout the country. And I will just slowly go through this so you can see if you recognize any from your community. Again, a lot of Florida hospitals here, a lot that I'm very familiar with. You probably are too if you're from this state. Also, a fair number of hospitals in California, a fair number in Texas, several in Pennsylvania. Um, there isn't exactly a rhyme or reason to where the hospitals are located, but these hospitals on this list were the worst in the country with regards to markups above cost. Now, there were a few similarities, though, that the study pointed out. These hospitals on the top 50 list were overwhelmingly for-profit hospitals. They were overwhelmingly part of a larger health system, principally located in urban centers, although there are several on that list, I can tell you for sure, in Florida at least, that, that are located in rural areas. Um, I think from the hospitals that I'm familiar with, from the, from the list of 50, it would be safe to say most are in urban centers and those that aren't are primarily in very rural areas. The suburban hospitals don't seem to be as egregiously overpriced as the urban or very rural centers. And the fourth characteristic that a lot of them had in common is there were no teaching hospitals on the list. Those hospitals that are considered teaching hospitals associated with a medical school or medical program typically were not as overpriced as the others. So again, reasonable charge is the cost of care plus a reasonable profit, which means that it only stands to reason it's difficult, if not impossible, to determine what a reasonable charge is without knowing the cost of care. And as we just learned, nearly all the hospital liens are limited to reasonable charges. It's important to realize, and many people don't, the cost of care data that will determine what a hospital's costs are, or at least give you a very good basis to estimate those costs, is available. Virtually every hospital in the country self-reports a detailed cost of care report every year to the federal government. That report's called the Hospital and Hospital Health Care Complex Cost Report, form CMS 255296. That form is public record, though not always particularly easy to get a hold of. Certainly, it can be requested in discovery, and it's very, very relevant to the, to the reasonable value or to reasonable charges if you're litigating a, a lien resolution issue. So if almost all the hospitals are limited to reasonable charges, you really need this data in order to negotiate your hospital liens. And you might ask, well, you know, do we really care about hospital liens? And of course, we know that you all do. Hospital liens are a very big deal when it comes to personal injury settlements. They do have to be taken into consideration from the beginning of your case so that you are aware that this lien is going to come out of the recovery. And as we all know, and hopefully not, hopefully we've not all experienced, although some have, I know I have did uh, once, it's real hard to explain that to a client after the fact and very well advised to explain it prior to settlement. Um, these, these liens attach to your settlement proceeds of almost all uninsured patients. So a hospital basically has a couple of point check that they run when through their billing software. That is, is the patient a self-pay patient? In other words, is there not health insurance or government insurance to bill? Um, and do the ICD-9 codes or whatever coding system the hospital is using, do they relate to accident-related care? And if, if those two things are true, the hospital will essentially automatically file a lien against a potential settlement. Those liens not only attach to uninsured client settlements, but oftentimes they attach to the proceeds of Medicare and Medicaid clients because hospitals under the Secondary Payer Act do not have to bill Medicare. They certainly are 
not only permitted, in some ways encouraged, and some would argue required, to look to other sources of recovery um, before billing Medicare. And I guess another way of saying that is if there's a tortfeasor insurance company out there who can pay for this hospital care, why should the taxpayers pay for it? So many hospitals will add a third point to that list of, uh, uh, of, of variables that I mentioned, and, and they'll, they'll also file liens against Medicare recipients and Medicaid recipients so that they can at least try to stand on their lien rights rather than billing Medicare or Medicaid. It's also uh, a big deal that most hospitals, as you might be aware, sometimes don't negotiate so fairly because they know they have this, this very strong lien right and they know that they have to be paid before the client gets their settlement proceeds. So hospitals use that leverage and oftentimes make it difficult to resolve these liens. Um, I'm often asked if there are legal and ethical issues with liens and yes, of course there are. Uh, most liens are statutory. In Florida, they're by county, but I still consider them statutory, even though they're by ordinance. Those statutes lay out a lot of different legal penalties, and most include attorney's fees for the hospital if their liens are impaired. Um, so an, an attorney who ignores a hospital lien would be found to have impaired that lien and could not only have to pay that amount that the hospital would have been paid you know, from his, from his end, because he's already distributed to the client, but also may be stuck with the hospital's attorney's fees improving that impairment. Uh, the statutes favor hospitals over plaintiffs in most states. That isn't true in all states. Uh, there are some very good hospital lien statutes out there, but many, many states, uh, the liens are slanted towards the hospital, I would have to assume because of a strong uh, hospital lobby in, in those states. But in, in, in the states like Florida, where the hospitals seem to have had all the power when these ordinances were drafted, the, um, it, it's required that they are paid first and they are paid before attorney's fees, before costs. If the reasonable value of a hospital bill in Florida or a hospital lien in Florida, I should say, exceeds the amount of a settlement, the hospital can take the entire settlement. And the attorney who acquired that settlement for his client would get nothing, would not even get his filing fees, and the client, of course, would get nothing either. Um, in addition to legal requirements, there are also ethical issues. And th those ethical issues include state bar rules and opinions that very often, often carry strict ethical penalties for ignoring or mishandling these hospital liens. And there's practical issues on top of the legal and the ethical concerns that I know that we all focus on so frequently. There are just practical problems with hospital liens that almost always creep up in your cases post settlement. Uh, attorney's fees are capped. Um, so you've already essentially earned all you can in this case. And now after settlement, sometimes you're faced with a protracted lien dispute, which is essentially a sunk cost. You can't get paid for it. You can't charge the client more for it. Uh, you basically just have to resolve it. Um, there's often a large knowledge gap as well. And personal injury lawyers very often don't have any information or data to use in these negotiations other than the documentation that the hospital has given, which just gives them their charge master rates and um, the descriptions of the services. Now, on top of that, as you know, your clients are often very concerned about the hospital debt hanging over their heads, in addition to how much of their settlement is going to go to the hospital instead of to them. So these practical issues can sometimes be just as important as the legal and ethical ones. Um, I always ask people, how, how do you handle your liens now? Uh, typically, the answer I get, I would say the status quo is, essentially a blind negotiation, basically starting at the hospital's full bill charges and negotiating for a discount down from that amount. This results very likely in paying far more than you should because in my view, you've started at the wrong number. 
unfortunately, it's the only number that that oftentimes you have, and and so starting there isn't uh, surprising, but but it, it does yield higher payments than you should than you should pay to most hospitals. These discounts from full bill charges are basically assuming something that isn't true. Hospitals will tell you they're offering you a 20% discount or a 30% discount off of their full bill charges. And that assumes that the full bill charges are the amount that's actually owed and they're coming down from the amount you owe them, which simply is not the case. That's not the case under the lien ordinances that we already looked at. It's not the case under the common law in most states. The hospital is not entitled to its full bill charges. It's entitled to a reasonable charge, a reasonable reimbursement. And as we know, a reasonable reimbursement can be equated to the cost of care plus a reasonable profit. So oftentimes, plaintiff's lawyers are willing to resolve these hospital liens just at the best discount they can get. And like I said, it's typically 20, 30, maybe 40%. Most plaintiff's lawyers that I deal with are satisfied with a 40% discount. They think that that is a, a, good, a good discount. And I think I'll show you here in a moment why I disagree. And I don't believe 40% is a good discount on most hospital bills. So Synergy has come up with a solution to this, I call it a data vacuum that we're in. Um, we can provide new data. Now, hospital reasonableness reports calculate the cost of care from the hospital's own self-reported data and the hospital's coded hospital bill. So you have your client's bill and Synergy can take that exact bill, run it through that hospital's cost data and determine with pretty good accuracy and a very defensible methodology what the hospital's cost of care was in treating that patient. And as I've said many, many times already, but you'll keep hearing it, a reasonable charge is the cost of care plus a reasonable profit. So through these hospital reports, you can now dictate the reasonable value, support it with verifiable data that the hospital themselves self-reported to the federal government under oath, and you can negotiate up from the reasonable value instead of down from the full bill charges. I call this inverting the argument, and I found after 10 years of using this this uh, structure that it's been very, very effective. Let's look first at the, what I'll call old results. These are the results in the, the model where you have nothing more than the hospital's full bill charges and you negotiate a discount from those charges. This is an actual hospital bill. That's why the number is so strange, $95,457.12. If you were to negotiate a 20% discount, and get it down to 76,000 and change, you would have given the hospital more than 640% profit above its cost. If you were to get them down to a 30% discount, 67 grand or so, you're still giving the hospital almost 420% profit. And that 40% discount that so many attorneys I talk to hold up as their goal, as their best day, still gives the hospital in this particular case a 344% profit. So if we look at that same bill, but use the new methodology, instead of negotiating for a discount from full bill charges, analyze this bill, determine what the cost of care is plus a reasonable profit, which I, which I use 50% as a reasonable profit above cost. And then, negotiate up from reasonable value instead of down from full bill charges. In this case, the analysis showed that the reasonable value is approximately $20,000 on this $95,000 bill. If we were to negotiate up from there and add 25% above reasonable value comes up to 25 grand, which is a 74% discount. But let's say the hospital won't agree to that and you, you have to keep going. So you go 50% above the reasonable value to 30 grand. You're still at a 70% discount from full bill charges. And if you double the reasonable value, you offer to pay the hospital twice what they're legally entitled to, $40,000 in this case, you'd still be achieving almost a 60% discount from the full bill charges. So 
the next question that I usually get from folks is, how much do the reports cost? Well, reports are done on a percentage of savings basis. So our reports are sold at 10% of savings. And I'll use this same case study to show you how much the report cost the attorney in the, in the one that we just analyzed. We got a $95,000 bill. Now it's important to point out that you should always try to obtain a preliminary offer from the hospital. Get them to make some kind of a concession before you order our reports, because doing so will reduce your client's fees, will satisfy your ethical obligations to try to resolve this bill. In, in this case, the hospital offered the attorney a 30% discount before he ordered this report from us. In other words, the hospital offered to accept $66,819. The report results in, in, in this case, the report resulted in the hospital accepting 50% above the reasonable value. So when the hospital accepted 50% above the reasonable value, that resulted in a $36,000, almost $37,000 additional savings to the client. Synergy's charges for this report are 10% of that additional savings. So $3,682 was billed to the attorney. That resulted in a net savings to the client of $33,000 and change. So stated differently, if you look up to the second bullet point here, there was a $95,000 bill the hospital offered to accept 66. If the client would have agreed and accepted 66, it would have been done. But by hiring Synergy and further reducing that bill, even with paying Synergy's fees, the hospital saved another, I mean, the client saved another $33,000. So a question that I think is an important one is when is the last time you or your firm has negotiated a personal injury settlement using no information or data other than the numbers provided by the defense? My guess is you've never done that and you never will do that. And my follow-up question is why would you even consider doing that here? If you start from the hospital's unreasonable full bill charges, you're going to end up at a higher number than starting from the hospital's reasonable value and working your way up. This data and this analysis is now available and it's available at no risk. Um, so it's important to remember in conclusion that using a reasonableness report always results in a net free suit savings or there's no fee. That's why I said that the data and analysis is not only available, it's available at zero risk. If these reports do not result in an additional savings to your client, you simply don't pay for them at all. We refund your advance fee and we charge you no additional fee. The fees for these reports are passed along to the client as an agreed cost just like the report of a life care planner or an expert report, it is a tool that is going to allow you to do a better job for your client and obtain a net savings or else it's free. I would bet, because I've certainly never heard of any, that your life care planner would not agree to that kind of deal. Typically when you hire an expert or a life care planner or someone of that sort, you're paying their rates and you're taking the risk. Here, although we're very similar to those sorts of expert reports in the sense that we're passed along as cost to the client, there is no risk because if there's no additional savings, there's no charge. And I should point out, although it's not here on the slide, that unlike a healthcare plan or another expert, we're not paid the fee until the end, until the lien is actually resolved. So you don't pay in advance and hope that these savings happen. There is a small advance fee um, that really just covers our costs, but the, the invoice, the final invoice for the report is not issued until after you notify Synergy that your lien has been resolved and then we can calculate the 10% of additional savings. So I would encourage anyone who has any questions or who would like a copy of a redacted report 
that will show you exactly what I'm talking about, show you what these reports look like. And I think with an understanding of why they work, you'll see the value that these reports can, can uh, add to your client's settlements because lien resolution sometimes is, although it's the last battle, sometimes it's as important or the most important battle in getting money into your client's pocket. So here's my contact information. I'm always available. Um, I'm happy to speak to anyone who has any questions, not only about action, you know, active cases or how to send us real work, but also just to talk through these issues. Uh, I do have a database of many of the state's different hospital lien statutes and case law. Uh, I'm happy to share any information I have and to help you figure out some of these issues. So thank you all very much for attending Synergy's third Thursday webinar. We look forward to hearing from you.